Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, where I get to rant and go crazy. Powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I have a rant for you today, but it's more of a question than a rant. But before we jump on and talk about this, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Also, follow us on our different social media platforms that are down below. Let's jump on in. This is a topic that I want to discuss because I think it's actually possible. Is it is it probable? No. Possible? Why not? Why isn't it possible? If it's only not possible because the people that don't like her will say so enough times on ESPN, then yeah, I guess not. But is it possible based on performance in the second half of the season? Could it change? Who knows? The question, could Caitlin Clark win WNBA, NBA, blah, 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 WNBA MVP? First thing you have to do is define what the MVP is. It's the most valuable player. The definition of most valuable player is subjective, to say the least. Some people believe the most valuable player is who they think the best player is. So, for example, Nikola Jokic has won the MVP what, three of the last four years in the dub, in the NBA. I think it is three of the last four years. Do you think he's the best player in the world? Many people do. Many people also think he's probably the most valuable player to his team because if you take Nikola Jokic off of the Denver Nuggets, they probably suck <laughs> bluntly. Um, if you take Giannis off of the Bucks, do they suck? Probably not. Are they a championship contender? No, but do they suck? Probably not. If you take Jason Tatum off of the Boston Celtics, are they a contender? Probably not. Do they suck? No. Same thing for Jalen Brown. If you remove Jimmy Butler from the Miami Heat, do they suck? You got darn right they do. If you take LeBron James off of the Lakers, do they suck? Hmm. They're definitely not going anywhere. I can assure you of that. They have no shot in shit. If you take Luca off of the Mavs, do they suck? Yeah. They're not, they're not even a playoff team. That's the question. And that's the question that I'm going to pose to everyone. And I'd love to get your comments. So please be sure to leave comments on this one because I want to get opinions. And I don't want to do homeristic opinions because, you know, I'm a Caitlin Clark fan. And I'm not saying she's going to win the MVP. And she's probably not going to win the MVP. Because there is a certain thing that goes on in the WNBA that will prevent it from happening. But could she, under the right circumstances? I think it's genuinely possible. Let's take a look at who the can the real candidates for WNBA MVP are. And I think the obvious one, the most obvious one, is Asia Wilson. Asia Wilson right now is leading the league in points. She's second in rebounds. She's got 2.3 assists, 2.0 steals. Asia Wilson's having a great year. We can go a little bit deeper, dig through it, scroll down, look at her stats. Uh, where are we at? Right here. Plays 34 minutes. 2.7 blocks also. That's big. Doesn't turn the ball over much. But she does also, also doesn't handle the ball much. 52.5% from... And from field goal range, I don't care about her three-point shooting. She doesn't shoot him, and when she shoots him, she's wide open. 87% from the line, that's big time. Team wins. But the Las Vegas Aces this year are not the Las Vegas Aces of last year. They're just not. And so when people talk about it, she's having a great, great year. She wasn't the MVP last year, and they won the championship. And her numbers last year, 23, 9 and a half. So she's having a better season than last year. Let's look at the next candidate. Here is your reigning MVP, Brianna Stewart, 29, 4, and 2. Go a little further down. Let's go back up. Stats. She's gone down. She's dropped three points per game. She's dropped almost a half a rebound. She's gone up a, half, a point one of an assist, gone up a little bit in steals. 
gone down in blocks. Field goal shooting is down 2%. Three-point shooting is down 10%. She does take four. She took almost six a game last year. She's taken 4.2 this year. Free throw shooting is relatively the same. Brianna Stewart's not a candidate for MVP. She's not going to win the MVP. But I'm giving the top five, in my opinion, who I think are the five top candidates in the league. Your next candidate is Sabrina Ionescu, who I think is a reach simply because you have two players from the New York Liberty on this list. I think the New York Liberty, look, they're having they're the best team in the league by record. They're probably the favorite now to win the, the WNBA championship. They are loaded in talent. They have weapons everywhere. Their three best players would start on every team in the league, regardless of who's playing. They're probably with the ex- forget that. Even even if they all if they all played for the Aces, they would all start, and Asia Wilson would start, and then you probably have Jackie Young starting at, at Jackie Young or probably Kelsey Plum starting at point. Kelsey Plum would start at point guard, even though she's not a point guard, or they'd start Chelsea Gray. But those three would all start. And I think you probably could look around the league and they probably start on every team, all three of them. But Sabrina's got averaging 24 and a half and six and one steal. She's probably the closest thing in terms of overall numbers when you want to compare her to Caitlin Clark. At the same time, she's not the best player on the New York Liberty. She is the second or third best player, depending on your opinion of John, John Quell Jones, who is a former MVP herself. Let's take a look at her stats this year. 920, uh, 4.46. She's shooting 42.5%. She's shooting 35.5% from three, 90% from the line. She, she's having a great year. Again, she's not the focus of their team. The focus of their offense is Brianna Stewart. Nonetheless, Sabrina is leading them in scoring. I'm pretty sure John Quell Jones is not averaging 20 a game. Then you have Nafisa Collier. Having a great season. Probably the best season of her career. 20.4, 10 boards, almost four assists, two steals. Stats. And the Minnesota Lynx are balling. Having a great year. As you can see, her, her career numbers is her second highest career scoring average. Most rebounds by almost a rebound and a half. Most, most assists, 1.2 more than last year. Most steals, more, more blocks. She's shooting 48.8. Her three-point shooting is a bit better than it was last year, but not anywhere near what it was her first two seasons. She's shooting 80, just under 80% from the line. They're winning. They're winning. Winning helps. Winning will always help in an MVP race. It's very rare that you're going to see a team that finishes under 500 and have someone win the MVP or even get consideration for it, for that matter. Bring in the fifth candidate, and that would be, of course, Caitlin Clark, who's averaging just under 18. And in my opinion, you're probably going to see this number jump to probably between 19 and 20 over the last 20 after after the, over the last 12 games. Just under six rebounds, leading the league in assists, 8.3, 1.4 steals. And then if you dig deeper into her stats, she's now shooting over 40%. 41.2%. Her three-point shooting needs to get better. Almost 89% from three. This, obviously, they will hold against her. They're going to hold these turnovers against her forever, even though they know that they're not all hers. They're going to hold that against her forever. But impact. The impact of this player. And this is where we have the conversation. Is this better than this overall i tell you right now i think it's fairly close but i think the impact here is greater than here so bye bye i eliminate i eliminate sabrina ionescu because she's not their best player bye brianna stewart is not having remotely close to the season she had last season bye it comes down to two people, Caitlin Clark or Asia Wilson. And it comes down really to how both of them finish the season. But at the same time, really how Caitlin Clark finishes the season. 
because this has been consistent all season long for Asia Wilson. She's been doing this all year. She's been balling all year. She's had no hiccups. Caitlin Clark had, had, has had some struggles. She's had some struggles in the case of having teammates who can't catch a pass. She's had struggles in the case of she's had you know some difficulty with her jump shot because she was clearly gassed out towards the end, towards before the All Star break. But I'm not going to make excuses. She's not the favorite for the MVP. She's probably not going to win MVP. But the question is, could she win the MVP? Here is how I say she would win the MVP: twenty five and twelve. Second half of the season. If she finishes the second half of the season going for 25 and 12, and right now she's at 26 and nine and a half, but 25 and 12 will have her numbers where she her she's probably averaging over 20 a game when the season's over, and keeping her rebounds at the six at the six rebound mark per game. Her assists at 25 and 12 would probably get her close to 10 assists per game. That is a remarkably high number in the WNBA, let alone for a rookie who for the first 10 games was not having these types of games because her teammates couldn't catch her passes. Heck, you can go to the last game against Seattle. She should have had 16 or 7, 15 to 17 assists between the missed layups, the botched passes, the, bot, the drop passes, and the shots that got blocked because they were so slow to release the ball. And this exists all season long. So her numbers in terms of assists, and at some point I'm probably going to do a video on all the assists that got blown for her. Whether it was a drop pass, that should have been a layup, or a missed layup, that should have been a layup. I'm not going to go say jump shots because jump shots are deep. Three-point shots are three-point shots. Those are harder shots to make. But layups are supposed to be made by any professional athlete, professional basketball player in the WNBA, the NBA, any league in the world, a wide open layup should always be made. And that's where the question remains. How does Indiana finish the season? Right now, heck, if you look above, I'm looking at this game right now. You have a 57 55 Connecticut over Chicago. That's a lot closer than I expected. But if you look at the standings right now, the Liberty are 25 and 4. They're rolling. Connecticut second, Minnesota's third. I don't think the Aces are going to win the championship. And I think, I, I, I mean, could they jump into the four slot? Yeah. I don't think they're going to be the three. I think they can potentially get the four, obviously, because only a half game out. But I don't think they can get up to the Minnesota. And Minnesota just did beat them. And, um, yeah, I don't think they get to the three. But they could be a four, but they could be a six. I don't think they fall to seven but they could be a six. Do I think Indiana catches the aces? No. It would take a, an act of God for that to happen. It would, it would take injuries to for that to happen to Las Vegas. The aces would need to lose players to have this happen. Now, there is that other, the other when I just mentioned injuries, certainly if Asia Wilson gets hurt and misses, they got, 13 games left, if she misses 8 of 13 games, which I don't expect that, but I don't wish that on anyone. But if she was to get injured and miss a substantial amount of time, that could that would play a role. But if Asia Wilson goes for the averages she's been averaging, 27 and 12 this season in points and rebounds, but, but Kaylin Clark goes 25 and 12 and 6, and her field goal percentage jumps up to like 43%, her threes go up to about 36%, and they finished 21 and 19. Keep that number in your mind. 21 and 19. I do not think that you can potentially possibly give a vote. I mean, you could give a vote, but I don't think you give a first place vote to a player on a team of the losing record in, in, in basketball. You can do that in baseball because baseball is heavily reliant, it is a very reliant team game. You can be the best player in the world, like Mike Trout was for a number of years, and the Los Angeles Angels sucked. But in basketball, if you're that good and you are that important, you're probably not going to have a losing record. The only reason the Indiana Fever have a losing record this year right now is because they got jammed 11 games in 19 days. And, and most of those games were against the best teams in the league, which were the Liberty, the Sun, 
and the storm. And they played them all a bunch of times in the first 11 games. They started one and seven, one and eight, one and eight. They started one and eight. And since then they are 12 and seven. That is a team that's turned it around because they finally got, once that gauntlet schedule cleared, they were able to finally practice and get used to each other. So that's the question right now. If they can go 21 and 19, let's say the Aces could finish at 25 and 15. That leaves them pretty much four, that's four games difference. What do you think? And I want you to be objective in your comments because I think that's what really we have to do here. Do I think Asia Wilson is the best player in the WNBA right now? Yeah. Do I think she's more skilled than Caitlin Clark? No. Do I think she has more impact on her team than Caitlin Clark? No. And that's the question of most valuable. I think Caitlin Clark is more valuable to her team than Asia Wilson is to her team. But if we're talking about valuable to the league, then it's not even a conversation because the most valuable player to the league and the success of the league and the numbers of the league, it's obviously Caitlin Clark, but that's not what we're doing here. We're not going to make it. It's not a popularity contest. It's not about who has most fans. It's not about who brings the most TV ratings. It's not about who got them private chartered planes for travel. But even in that conversation of most valuable, her value to her team is higher than any other player in the league's value to theirs. I don't care what team you look at. You take Caitlin Clark off this Indiana Fever team, this right here, right now, if you ask me, based on this, we can go through the schedule. You base it on this. Blowout loss, blowout loss. Let's go look at the wins by five. Clark had 10 rebounds here and eight assists. Lost, they won by one. If Clark's, Clark in this game, I don't think she played that great, if I recall. I don't think she played that great. Let's take a look. Clark had 11, 8, and 6. Do you think they win that game if she doesn't play? If you're replacing her with anybody else on this team? Look at that. Lexi Hall was getting DMP. This is crazy. Think about this. Lexi Hall's getting major burn now. She did DMP coach's decision. They lose this game without Caitlin Clark. They lose. They lose. Facts. Two point win. Clark at 30. Without Caitlin Clark, they lose. They won by seven. Boston at 27. Six assists from Clark. What did Caitlin do in this game? Rough game, and eh, they probably win the game without her. That was that was a rough one. Although you can look at her impact in people covering her and how they guard her. Remember, she gets guarded without the ball. But I'll say they win that game regardless. Let's take a look at it. Eight point win, twenty three. They lose without her. 88, 81, 12 assist, twelve rebounds, six assists. How many points did she score in this game? She had 18. They lose this game without her. That's three. Atlanta. What she? This was the worst game she had, I believe. One of the worst games she had. This was after it was announced that she wasn't on the all on the Olympic team. Oh no, there wasn't. 16. I'm sorry, 16, 7, and 4. Plus 13 when she's on the floor. They won by 12. Oh, uh, yeah. They lose this game without her. That's four. This game, she had a double-double, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. 15, 12, and 9. Yeah, she should have triple-double here, too. They lose this game without her. So that's five. That's one, two, three, four. That's six, actually. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
the, this game, they absolutely lose. I mean, triple double versus uh, the New York Liberty, they lose. That's seven. They win by nine here. Let's see what happened here again. I mean, I saw all these games. I just have to obviously show it on on the screen. What you do here? This was 2013, and they lose this game. Like this is what I'm talking about. You take her off this lineup, out of this lineup. There's no one that can replace her. So if we go through all this. They lose this game as well. They lose this game as well. They lose this game. Without Caitlin Clark, this is a one-win team right now. This is a one, one. And 27 team right now, potentially, based on what happened on, on the floor. Based on what happened on the floor, this is a 1 and 27 team. Caitlin Clark is that woman. She has that much of an impact on her squad that if she's not playing, they're probably going to lose. They're probably going to lose. So let me know your thoughts. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you got to say. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. And hit, hit all those social media platforms as well. Love to hear back from you. I appreciate all your support. Come on now.